i asked guards security guards i ran into another security guard that was forced to burn a lot of u f o pictures and he told me he came into my office one day this was when i worked in another job he came into my office and he was very frightened and he said don i'm you know i heard you were interested in this subject he said i used to work out there and one day some soldiers came in in the fatigues and had me burn pictures and he said that he was burning them and then they were, he was forced not to look at them but he was tempted he looked at one of them and it was a ufo on the ground shortly thereafter he was hit in the head with a bun a gun, gun butt and he still had a scar on his forehead from that being knocked out cuz he looked at the picture and we get quite a bit of information about the sightings we get uh, drawings of what the vehicles look like uh, whether they landed or not whether they were they saw any people with them you know extraterrestrials things like that and we would get pictures in of the, the uh, supposedly avm or or satellite areas and once in a while a, uh, an anomaly would show up on the picture that didn't belong there a uh, round object a triangular object uh they were not uh, markings put on the photograph that indicate some place or anything like that these were above ground they were not uh, part of the picture um my boss came to me i was working in a color lab at that time i was a technician photographic technician i i was asked to go over to this facility on langley air force base where the nsa was uh, bringing in the information from the lunar orbiter and so i packed up some tools i went over uh, i went into the facility um a couple of officers took me into this hangar it was a very large hangar So they took me into this laboratory. I took a look at the equipment. There was an airman second class in there. I was an airman second class as well. He turned the equipment on and put it through its paces. It didn't do what it was supposed to do. I saw what was going on with it. And I said to him, you know, we'll have to take this thing out of the lab if we're going to work on it. We can't work in it on it in here in the dark room environment. So everyone left the facility, left the dark room. except this airman second class and myself and we're in waiting for someone to come to remove this piece of equipment and at the time i didn't know what the real purpose of this dark room and this operation in this facility was i thought this was where they were bringing the data in and then releasing the images to the public they were doing 35 mm strips of film at that time which were then assembled into 18 and a half by 11 inch uh, mosaics they were called there is a digital signature and a grayscale on every 35 mm strip and those those strips were from successive passes around the moon so he was showing me how all this worked and we walked over to one side of the lab and he said by the way we've discovered a base on the back side of the moon and i said i said who's <laughs> what do you mean who's he said yes there's we've discovered a base on the back side of the moon and at that point i because became frightened and I was a little terrified thinking to myself that if anybody walks in the room now I know we're we're in jeopardy we're in trouble because he should be giving me this information and then he pulled out one of these mosaics and showed showed this base which had geometric shapes there were towers there were uh, spherical uh, buildings uh, there were very tall uh, towers and things that looked somewhat like radar dishes but they were large structures if i compare it to what i'm seeing now because i do have photographs that have artifacts in them that are similar to what i saw they're massive some of the structures are you know a half a mile in 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 size so they they're huge structures Uh, some of the some of the buildings uh, seem to have uh, very reflective surfaces on them uh so a couple of structures that i saw reminded me of um, cooling towers at at uh, power generating plants they had that sort of a shape uh, some of them that were were just very very straight and tall with a flat top 
Uh, some of them were round. Some of them looked like a Quonset hut, you know, with a domed kind of, like a greenhouse. The particular shot that I saw, there were several clustered together over a landscape, a fairly large landscape. I didn't want to look at it any longer than that because I felt that my life was in jeopardy. Do you understand what I'm saying? I would love to have looked at it longer. I would have loved to have had copies. I would love to have you know, said more about it and discussed it more, but I knew I couldn't. And I knew that the young fellow who was sharing this was really, really overstepping his bounds at that point. They said, we were going to show you a film that might help you best put into perspective what you, are, what you gentlemen have uh, witnessed and help you maybe put it to bed a little bit for yourselves. This thing went all the way up to the space program. It showed, and I swear to God, it showed structures on the moon, these box kind of things that looked sand colored. It showed that lunar car moving around. Uh, I remember those clearly because I remember being a child when all that was happening, but them at a distance pointing, astronauts pointing at these box looking things, uh, structured objects moving off the surface of, of the moon filmed by definite Apollo missions. I was at a, a facility in California, that's all I can say, and I was doing particular classified work uh, set aside from what was actually happening there. It was a completely different scenario. <clears throat> the only thing I can say is it was, it was occurring at the same time that our astronauts were doing a loop around the moon and back again. <clears throat> on their trip to the to that moon or to the moon itself, I heard the expression of a bogey coming in at eleven o'clock. Well, familiar with that particular term, I perked my ears and started listening a little bit, and discovered that um, Houston and the astronauts were talking back and forth about a collision, and uh, the astronauts asked for uh, permission to do avoidance for a collision and Houston finally granted that permission to do that and after the after the calm length settled down a little bit the astronaut said it's not necessary they are now par paralleling our course and there was a discussion as to what was paralleling that course there was another type of ship there were portals there that they could see in they could see beings of some sort they did not describe these beings they just took photographs and after a while, a few thousand miles, and then they took off from the capsule that they were flying in and went away. <laughs>